Hi, and welcome to our presentation. My name is Ben Turney, and I'm the Executive Director of Cavango Resources. We're a London-listed exploration company with base metals projects in Botswana. Our flagship asset is in the Kalahari Suture Zone in the southwest of the country, which you can see on this map highlighted in red. I'm joined today by our founder and chief geologist, Mike Moles, who's going to talk us through the progress that we've made over recent years and what the opportunity in the KSZ is. So, Mike, hi. Let me hand over to you. Let's talk first of all about what we can see on this map here. Okay, well, what we're looking at here is a, a 450 kilometer long magnetic anomaly, which runs uh, along the edge of the Kapval Kraton. Um, and it's all covered in sand. So you can't, there's nothing to see on surface whatsoever. Uh, uh, but these uh, uh, red and pink areas are uh, uh, magnetic anomalies, uh, which run along the, along the course of a deep uh, crustal weakness um, and fault system, uh, which has brought uh, gabroic uh, intrusives up towards the paleo surface. And what we're looking at here are the licenses uh, that Cavango has acquired we did have some more licenses than this, but uh, we gave up some of the licenses because they were in the national park. And I think we decided that uh, there was not much point in holding ground in the national park. So you wanna go on to the next slide? So if we're looking here, Mike, um, as, as you know, over the last 18 months, we've been working with a lot of data sets, uh, both proprietary and uh, available, uh, widely available um, data. And we've created a proprietary, quite sophisticated underground 3D model of the KSZ. So, so tell us, what are we looking at here? Well, this is the Northern section of the Kalahari Suture Zone. Uh, and it's about uh, 25, 30 uh, kilometers across uh, and about uh, 30 kilometers long. Um, and what, what you're actually looking at here is the intrusive bodies, the, uh, the gabbro intrusives. And you can, this is, a, this is what it looks like, what, what the uh, intrusives look like in three dimension. And you can see that the, the large Karoo gabbro sill uh, contains thin zones, which uh, we call gull wings and much thicker zones uh, that we classify as keels. And these keels can be 500 meters or even deeper. And it is in these keels that uh, we uh, are, are looking for uh, massive sulfide uh, deposits. And this uh, image here shows a detail of that, of that uh, 3D model. Um, and We've, we've put in there uh, possibly where the uh, massive sulfide would be located in the deeper parts of the, uh, of the intrusive bodies. So Mike, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the type of systems that we're after. Um, in our literature that we've released via the London Stock Exchange's RNS service, we talk a lot about the uh, Norilsk style deposits. Just, just walk us through that. Well, this is a schematic of a typical keel uh, that is found at Norilsk. And you will have, you'll notice uh, the similarities uh, between this diagram and the, uh, the 3D model that we've just been looking at. And uh, so we've got here a, a, the keel of uh, one of the uh, uh, gabbros at, at Norilsk. Um, this is three, 400 uh, meters thick. And you can see on the sides, the, the gull wings, uh, somewhat truncated by the schematic. And towards the bottom in the red maroon color is where the massive sulfide uh, material has been, uh, ha has accumulated. So give us an idea, Mike, of, of what Norilsk compares to worldwide and, and how, how prolific a mining center that's been. Well, Norilsk is probably, almost certainly, the biggest uh, single mine in the world, although it's actually a collection of mines, come to think of it. Um, but it has uh, uh, enough, it's the largest producer of nickel and copper 
uh, in the world, the largest producer of palladium in the world. Um, it has, it supplies 90% uh, of all of Russia's um, uh, nickel and copper. Um, and it has reserves uh, that uh, will last Russia at least for the next 90 years. And uh, there is still more reserves to be found, uh, I'm sure. So it is huge. And we also and it know, one like of, it's one of many uh, similar deposits elsewhere in the world. There are other ones like Vosis Bay, uh, Jinxiang, uh, Thompson, uh, and so on. Right, yeah. So Mike, we've obviously, you know, so we, we've got an idea of the, the size of, um, of the, the deposits we're looking for. So, mm. so this slide here, this is, this is an illustration that we've created. Just tell, tell us about the significance of the underlying rock formations in the, in the Kalahari Suture Zone. Okay, well, you can see the, uh, the magma has, been, has come up through a relatively thin dike uh, through the very hard crystalline basement rocks. And as it intrudes into the much softer uh, uh, Carew's sedimentary sequence, um, it erodes away uh, the, uh, the material, uh, forming a, a magma chamber. And it, in this particular environment, the, these sediments contain coal bearing uh, rocks, uh, or, or at least uh, 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 sedimentary sequences which contain large amounts of uh, carbonaceous material. And this carbonaceous material, including coal, um, is rich in sulfur and carbon. And as the magma erodes into the sediments, it's incorporating uh, these coal measures and incorporating the copper and nickel into the milk and providing uh, a, a, a saturation of sulfur into the, into the molten rock. And this has the effect of combining with the metals, the copper and the nickel and other metals uh, to form a nickel sulfide liquid, a nickel sulfide melt, if you will. And the, the magma, meantime, is uh, being extruded out onto the surface through these uh, uh, volcanic um, uh, fissures. I wouldn't call them volcanoes, they're more likely to be just fissures. And so huge amounts of lava are being extruded onto the, onto the surface. And as it does so, the magma is replenished from below, uh, bringing fresh magma, which in its turn combines with the uh, sulfur in the coal bearing uh, sedimentary rocks uh, um, and segregating further uh, quantities of copper and nickel. So this is what we call an open system. And it's the open system which uh, allows the accumulation of vast quantities of, uh, of metal sulfides. And it's worth pointing out here, isn't it, that, that you see similar um, characteristics in, in Norilsk, which is one of the, the key features between the Kalahari Suture Zone and obviously that, that prolific mining centre. Now, if we move on to the next slide and we can see about the formation of, of, of metal sulfides, just, just tell us a bit about what we're looking at here, Mike. Yeah, well, I think that now we've sort of moved on a few million years, and so the the uh, intrusive is cooling down. As it cools down, the uh, metal sulfide liquid, uh, because it's heavy or dense, it uh, works its way down towards the bottom of the magma chamber. But it will also adhere to the wall rocks, uh, forming these... Um, uh, uh, sulfide breaches, which are also um, a common feature of this type of mineralization. So, um, now, that, so now that we know that we've identified the rock formations, we know the, the type of targets that we're looking for. Um, let's talk, Mike, about our plans for exploration in the Kalahari Suture Zone over the coming months. Yeah, well, what we've, we've just started, we did an orientation exercise just before Christmas, and that uh, is about to start, I think, next week. Uh, we're going to carry on with this work. And, and so what we're trying to do here is to identify the exact location of these accumulations of uh, 
uh, of magmatic sulfides, which uh, tend to be located towards the bottom of the magma chamber or in the, in the wall rocks. But it's very important to find out exactly where they are in three dimensions. Now, we, because we've created a three-dimensional model, we know where the Gabbro intrusives are. This uh, particular geophysical uh, survey, which is called the TDEM, so TDEM survey, uh, is designed to locate what they call uh, uh, fast, very fast uh, uh, conductors, high-speed conductors. And we can calculate the exact location of these high-speed conductors within uh, the, the gabbros. So provided we've got a, uh, a conductor and it resides within the gabbro, uh, there probably is not much else that it can be apart from an accumulation of uh, magmatic sulfide. So that's the exercise that we're going to be carrying out over the next uh, couple of months. So once we finish that exercise, uh, that then will take us to drilling. Now we raised two million pounds in November and we have about another half million pounds that we're expecting to raise between now and April through a warrant exercise. We're fully funded through um, to our drill campaign. We're expecting to drill um, up to 10 holes later on this year once we've completed our surveys, our large loop surveys across uh, the Hook and Sea section of the KSZ. We're currently focusing on four main project areas and within that, we have six specific targets that we're looking at now with news flow expected to start from towards the end of this month. If you'd like to find out more about Cavango, please drop us a line um, through the one-to-one -one meeting um, um, page and we'll, we'll be very happy to meet you and, and discuss more about our plans for the future. Thank you.